Welcome everyone, Farmer Comp here. This is gonna be a quick guide to the Easy Development Controls mod. This is a mod by GTX. It is 0.2 megabytes to download. It is only for PC and Mac players and it will not come to console. The reason being is it takes uh, advantage heavily of scripts um, to get this thing working. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. So if you don't remember this from FS19, this does a lot to change what you can actually do in the game and it makes it a lot easier to do different things, especially for content creators. So um, it's very useful for us and for anyone really trying to play the game um, that's trying to save some time with various things. So it's very helpful, very helpful mod. Now to access it, there's an interface for it. To access it, you're gonna hit F12. Now you might think, okay, well, if you're running the Power Tools mod and you're running Easy Development Controls, you can run them at the same time. You just have to change the key binding. So what you can do to do that, if you go into the menu and you come down here to your key bindings, if you, I don't have it installed right now, but if you had it installed, you'd find Power Tools mod and change it to, I don't know, F10 or something else, something else other than F12 or change the uh, Easy Development Controls to a different key binding. They won't work together if they're on the same key binding, but right now I just have the easy development controls installed. So everything we're gonna do today is gonna be based on that. So first off, if I hit F12, it's gonna open up this menu right here, which has uh, a general settings tab. It has player settings, objects and fill type settings, vehicles, placeables, fields, farmland, environment, and then it has a help menu. Now there's also, if you're in multiplayer, there'll be another menu that'll pop up that has some different features for multiplayer. Um, as far as my understanding goes, those mostly just help you kind of run multiplayer a little bit better and help you be able to adjust things a little bit quicker in there instead of having to go through the actual multiplayer menus in the game. So I'm not gonna cover those in this video. Um, so going through here, it shows you, which is really nice, if you wanted to read about any single one of the options, you can do that real quick right here. You really don't even need my video. All my video would have to say is here, come read these and you'll be good to go. Uh, but we're not gonna cover everything. There's a lot of stuff in this, but I am gonna cover just the basics. So starting from the general settings tab, we have add, add, remove, add money, remove money, and set money. So if I wanted to add money, let's say, well, if we look out here, um, I have $449,000, so if I wanted to add, I don't know, $1,000 to make that an even, you know, $450,000, I just hit enter. I type in what I want to enter, and I hit enter there. I can do any amount. I can do $23 if I wanted to enter that. Down here to say add $23 to account. So you go, see, $1,000 miscellaneous, 23 miscellaneous. Now, if I come back into that menu, hitting F12 again, I can take out that $1,023 if I decided I didn't want it. Hit enter. Boom, took it out for me. The other thing, too, if I'm like, okay, for like a role play aspect, it's like, hey, I want to start this game save off with only $10,000. I can come in here, enter $10,000 in the set money, and hit it. it right there. It sets my, my finances to $10,000. So very helpful. Um, I don't think we're going to need it, but I'm just going to set us up to um, $500,000 in case we do need it. Extra time scales, on or off. So if you have this to off, the time scales are going to be just in general, just normal. If you have it set to on, it's going to have you this. Uh, give it a little warning. So I'm going to hit confirm, come out here. Now, if you look up there in the upper left or upper right hand corner, as I hit eight, which eight and seven on PC are the default keys to speed us up. Normally, we would stop here at 360 in base game 500, 2000, 5000, 10,000, 20, and 40. And that's oh, 60, keeps going, sorry, up to 60,000. You can see we are just cooking through time. Um, and so I'm just going to try to drop us right back down to the bottom there. So um, again, that's very useful if you wanted to have that sort of setup good to go for you. Now we hop back in here, we can also stop time. So if I hit that, it's no longer a checkbox there. Our time is set to zero. So if we're doing tests and stuff like that, I can stop it. Now, if I wanna start it again, all I have to do is hit eight and it moves me back into one times and back into the time scale. And then come in here to stop it again if I'd like. Now flight mode, I can do flight mode on or off. So I'm gonna leave it at on. Now, unfortunately, if it's on, it's not working. Q and E, if you know, normally allow you to go up and down. Nothing's working here, I'm not flying. The reason being is that second option, flight state. So if I turn that to on, well, I can come out here and I can go up or down using E and Q. The other option I have is if I hit J on my keyboard, that turns it off here. So if I go into the menu here, it's turned it off. If I hit J again on my keyboard, go back in here, it's turned it back on. So you can toggle it by hitting a J. So I can go J, can go up, J to turn it off, and I'm back down on the ground. So that's an option there as well. Coming back in here, HD or HUD visibility on or off. Um, so I can turn that on or off. As far as if I turn it off, you can see the HUD's gone. Go back in here, turn it on. Exit out, HUD's back on and off. And again, this down here, it allows you to set a key binding to be able to toggle that on and off if that's set to on or off. So you can do that as well. Um, delete objects input. If I have that to on, and delete objects, so I can delete objects if I walk up to them. So if I wanted to walk up to this, for example, I think it should show up, yeah, right there. Right there, upper left-hand corner, delete it. I hit delete, deletes it. I can also do this on trees. If I wanted to delete this tree, walk up to the tree, up there in the upper left-hand corner, delete tree, deletes the whole dead gum tree. Very cool, very useful. Um, I think you can delete just about anything we'll see here. No, nope, only placeable stuff looks like. So not everything, but you can delete a lot of stuff, which is super helpful if you wanted to use that tool there. Going here, I'm going to turn that to off again. Map selection. So this is a teleport player. It says map selection here. So 
Um, what I can do if I hit check mark on that, I can choose somewhere to teleport myself. Let's say I want to go in the middle of field 57. I double click there and it teleports me there, I hop out. I'm in the middle of field 57, um, which is pretty sweet. Now if I go back in there, I can hit map selection again. Let's go back over to where I was at, which is up over uh, here. Beautiful, so now we're back up over here. The other thing I can do is I can toggle over to X and Z. So if you don't know, down the bottom left-hand corner, you see that 121157 on my map, and now I'm changing it, 1195, 1168. Those are your X and Y coordinates. If I wanted to go to a specific location, I can turn this over to X and Z, and I can say I wanted to go to 10 by 10. Um, and it should, oof, 10 and slash 10. There we go, and it should teleport me somewhere. Oh, nope, I don't know why it's not letting me. Oh, it needs a space, that's why. Space. 10, there we go, there's our coordinates. Teleports me to 10 by 10, which happens to be up out here in the middle of nowhere. So let's go kind of back to where we were at. We'll just go map selection, and again, I'm gonna teleport myself over there. The other thing I can do is teleport myself to a field. So if I wanna to teleport to field 74, I am, by now looking here, down there bottom left-hand corner of the map, you can see I'm in the middle of field 74. So I can do that as well. I'm gonna put us back up over here. So that's how that works. Now flip vehicles, this next one right here, I'm actually going to go into here and turn super strength on, which you toggle it in here on the player setting. I'm gonna walk up to this vehicle, and I know this is not the normal way I would flip a vehicle over. I'm gonna use super strength just to flip it over, whether it's on its side or completely upside down. If I have any vehicles on the map that are flipped over, um, if I come into here in this general settings, um, it should give me the option to have a flip vehicle, which I see it's not doing, of course. Now I literally, tell, there we go, flip vehicle, Click that, boom, flips it back up. So you might actually have to be in range of it. That might be the actual way you have to go about it. But yeah, there you go, flips your vehicle back over. Very useful. I can just keep hitting that as much as I want once I'm in range of a vehicle. So it'll flip it back over to kind of a normal setup for us, which is super cool. Um, set a field of view angle. So if I wanted to do, I don't know, something crazy like 20, this is probably gonna suck. You can see this is my field of view. Very odd, very not normal, probably making you guys sick. Anyway, we'll hit reset and put it back to normal so you can set that. Set quality, I can do high, low. If I do low, we hop out of here, you can see that it doesn't render things until I get super close to them. It just sets all your graphic settings way low. Um, and you can adjust it from very high, high user setting, which is whatever you have set at, and medium. So I'm gonna go back to very high, which is where I was at. Show collectibles, you have standard, or I can do 0% found all the way up to 90% found. But if I do 0%, it should show all of them on the map. So if I go in here in the menu, on the map, it gives me a little yellow dot where every single one of those bad boys is. Uh, which is pretty sweet and pretty handy as far as that goes. So good to go there. Um, that's basically everything in here. I'm not going to cover a lot of the, or some of the stuff here. Super strength on and off. We already talked about that. It allows you to pick up things that are heavier than you should be able to pick up. Jump multiplier. I can go all the way up to 10 times and all the way down to two times. When I jump, it gives me a jump multiplier. Pretty self-explanatory as far as that goes. We'll turn that back off. Third person view. If I turn it on, I have a third person view of my person. Um, I'm going to turn that back off. Wood cutting marker. That is when you are using a chainsaw, that marker that shows you where you're about to cut, you can turn that on or off. Default, it's on off or on on, but if you turn it off, you can do that as well. A marker is on. Do you see that little circle right in the middle of my screen? It's on the middle of the silo right now, right in the middle of my screen, a little circle. I can turn that off using this. A marker off, boom, it's gone. And then turn it back on going into here. Running multiplier, if I turn it on, I can do four all the way up to, I think it's 14. Yeah, and then back down to two, 14. If I walk, it's still normal, but if I run, boom, we're just zooming at 14. So um, we can, oh, I paused the game. That was my bad. Um, we'll turn that back to off there. Now, debug information, all sorts of different stuff like this you can have uh, set up in there. This is a, a multiplayer uh, configuration here. We're not gonna worry about this. We're gonna move on to the objects and fill types. So we can add a bale. So that's why, let's say in front of us, I wanted a, uh, we'll say round bale, and I want it to be 238. That's caught in there. I'm all the way up to, um, so I can go back down to a square bale and go all the way up to, 40, 48, and I can add that bale if I wanted to add that, or round cotton bale. So you can go through this, but if I wanted to do, let's say, round bale, let's do wrapped grass, uh, 150 centimeters, and I hit this check mark. Well, boom, it's gonna drop a bale right down in here. Now, I don't know if you can actually change the color on that, uh, but it's just, if I drop another one, it's gonna drop another green one. Yeah, it looks like it's just gonna drop you green bales. But anyhow, I'm not sure if there's a way, I'm sure there probably is a way. Available bale types, if I click this, it's gonna give me a list of all the available bale types I have that I can make. Fermenting bales, it's gonna show me if a list here, which I just made two bales, is gonna show me those two bales and the fermentation progress. And it's also gonna give me their coordinates, which is super nice. If I go down here, show bale locations on or off, I say on, um, what it's gonna do, if I go out of here into the map, it should show me, you see two little red dots right down here on the screen. You can see that right under my marker. That is where my bales are at. So it's gonna show me where my bales are at. Um, so if I go back down, sorry, we're into here. I'm um, gonna turn that off, then I'll get rid of that. Show pallet locations, I can turn that on to again, show the pallet locations on the map. Add a pallet, I can add a pallet of farm products, general. 
So if I wanted a, a pallet of bread, I could add that in here and boom, it's gonna give me a, a nice little pallet of bread right there. And you can do this, you know, a thousand times if you just wanted, you know, 50 pallets of bread out here, um, you could do that no problem. Just a bunch of bread, easy peasy, there you go. Um, and again, I can do that with crops. So I can do add a pallet of corn. So there we go, there's a pallet of corn. Or if I wanted to add a pallet of, I don't even know what a pallet of cotton would look like. Those are some pallets of cotton. You can see they're not really filled, but they do have, theoretically have cotton in them. I don't know what's going on here. Anyhow, yeah, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. All stuff is in there, farm products. Let's see, I needed some liquid fertilizer. Boom, pallet of it right there, spawned it in. I can add a log. I can choose the tree, and then I can choose how long it is. So if I wanted that size tree, there it is. I just spawned it in there. Um, you can go through all that yourself. Tip to ground, let's say I wanted, uh, I don't know, 10 meters wide. That's how, that's the radius. Let's do 10,000 liters. Boom, 10,000 liters of wheat right there. If I wanted a smaller radius, I could probably do one and we'll do, see if I'll put 10,000 in there. It might not do full 10,000. You can see I lowered my radius down, so it's a little bit more tight. Uh, but there you go. A clear tip area, so let's say I wanted within you know, 100 meters or yeah, 25 meters of me here, I wanted to clear everything out. So I hit that, it's gonna clear all that stuff out. I must not have been 25 meters of this. If I hit it again, boom, all that wheat. Now you also can go through, if you have several things around you, you can choose a specific item to clear out of there. And I know guys, I am covering this super quickly. I apologize for that, but there's a lot to cover. So just slow me down if you need to. Uh, but I know that this could be a two hour video and I'm trying to not make it that for you guys. Uh, show tip collisions. If I turn that on, it's gonna show me if there's any tip collision. So the zeros are no tip collision here. Obviously there's a structure, so there's a tip collision. On off there, remove bales. It removes all bales to the mass. So if I hit continue, it's gonna remove my two bales over here. If I go into here, remove pallets, remove all those pallets that I just spawned out. So boom, all those pallets I spawned are gone. That log is still sitting there weird. Remove logs, I can remove all logs from the map. There they go, gone like that. Remove stumps, if I had any stumps on the map, I can remove them if I'm doing forestry. That is all on this screen here. Moving on, vehicles. So we can remove all vehicles from the map. Otherwise, we need to just go ahead and hop into a vehicle to actually do some stuff here. So we're gonna hop into this uh, tractor and trailer here uh, to kind of show you some of the features here. So if I hop in here, maybe, there, um, I'm trying to enter it. Anyhow, let's just tab over to it. It's not let me enter it for some reason. Super odd, it won't let me get in my vehicle here. I don't know why that is. Anyhow, we'll get back into it this way. Okay, beautiful, turn that help menu off and open the cover, F12 menu. I can reload this vehicle, I can reload and reset it, so I can do either or here. I can analyze the vehicle and then it'll send it to your log. We don't need to worry about that. Fill unit, fill unit one, we only have one here. Um, I can do anything in that back trailer. Say I wanna do oats, I can set it to be empty or I can set it to uh, full capacity. So if I hop out, full capacity oats there. Um, I can set it to empty, boom, it's empty. I also can set it to, let's say I wanted, I don't know, um, 1,023 liters of wheat. I can set it to that down there, bottom right hand corner, 1,023 liters of wheat. So great for role play aspects. Toggle cover, I can turn the cover on and off. You see there, cover on. And actually down here, you can remove the background, which is removes the background of the screen so we can actually see what we got going on. Toggle cover on and off. Condition, I can set, um, so on this vehicle that I'm in, I can set all to a specific level or I can set dirt to, let's say 100%. Boom, tractor super dirty. I can set it to 0%, cleaned it off. I can add a certain amount of dirt to it. I can add wear to it, boom. I can damage it, boom, if I wanted to do that. 100, you know, whatever I wanted to do. Um, I can remove damage and I can do all stuff. I can remove it, set it, add. Let's set it all to, um, let's just set it all to 100%. Boom, it's dirty, damaged, everything. If I hop out of here down the bottom right hand corner, you can see the damage is terrible. I also can set the fuel level to either empty, I can set it to a specific level or I can fill it to a certain level. Uh, set power consumer, I'm not sure what all this stuff is gonna do here. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover the things that I think is gonna be important, which is remove vehicles we already kind of covered and then operating time. So let's say I want this thing to have a thousand hours on it. Boom, hop out down there bottom right hand corner, it's got a thousand hours on it. So you can set your hours for kind of a role play aspect if you wanted to do that. Uh, so pretty cool as far as all that goes, but moving on, placeables. Um, the first thing on here is current trigger. So this is kind of cool. I'll go over here um, and show you guys this real quick. Um, again, trying to rush through this a little bit to not make it a super long video. Current trigger. Um, so I can, why is it not giving me that? Oh, that's because I'm doing it completely wrong. So just ignore me. A uh, reload, I can reload what I'm, this is what I'm near, the the, the farm of 400, that's the placeable I'm near. I can remove all placeables, remove map placeables, and I can reload all the placeables if I would like to do that as well. Um, now if we go over here, current trigger, uh, so I can set owner here, uh, production plants. I can set their different owners and stuff like that. Um, farm owned, I can go through here. I can set owners, I can set their state. Uh, so either on or off and I can, that's for all of them right now. 
um, output mode, I can set them all to storing, selling, distributing, all that sort of stuff. Fill levels, I can set their fill levels um, to empty, percentages, anything like that. There's a lot of information in there. Just make sure you guys mess around with it. Production points list, it'll show me all the production points on the map, who owns them, you know, everything like that, all the stuff they got going on. Delivery mapping, this is kind of cool. So anything I have distributing to another place, so I have my flour mill that I own, my grain mill here, distributing to my bakery. So it's going to show me um, the transfer cost there, 1,000 liters, 4136. So that's how much it's, it's, it's got a lot of information. It's super cool. So you can actually kind of keep track of your productions, uh, which is super cool as far as all that goes. Um, yeah, very cool. Now, if we go back up to here, I think it's in, chip to, I think I missed here, tip to trigger. Here's what I was thinking about in my head. So I can hit all, let's say I want to put wheat in my silo. Let's say I want to put 50,000 liters of wheat since I'm in a trigger space right here. Updating target storages, beautiful. If I go into my, oops, get rid of that. If I go into my menu here, I now have 50,000 liters of wheat in that storage. So I can do that to add wheat to a storage or add any amount to anything like that. Um, that's pretty much everything in here. We go over here to fields and farmland as we're getting close to hopefully wrapping up soon. Set field fruit, I open this up. I can choose all fields. So let's say I wanted field one or two or anything like that or all of them. I can go to there and let's say I want ground later. We'll say fertilize, sure, weeds, small, growing. I need to rolling, buy farmland, yes, we'll buy it. Stone, state two, lime, yes. Fertilizer, 50%, we'll do oats. I don't know if you can do, I don't think it'll let me do like uh, grapes, no, more. barley. Uh, so we'll do uh, harvest, we'll do rate of harvest, plowed, sure, sure, sure. I don't know, you can confirm that. Um, so all fields now, we hop out of here. All these fields just got set to be ready to harvest if we go on the map and we set to own them. So you see we own all the fields now, they're all barley and they are all, there we go, ready to harvest. And those are the different other configurations that we set as far as different stuff like that. So all that stuff's gonna show up on there because that's how we set it. Pretty cool, you can do all that. Set field ground, you can set the ground state of specific fields using all these different configurations here. Um, set vine state, if we had vines, you could adjust those. If you wanted to update vine visuals, you wanted to do that. Weed, weeds here, so if we go to this field, which we're actually gonna set it to just so we can see it, set field ground state, we'll do, we're on field 45, it'll load up whatever one you're on. So if we should be able to do that, should just clear it all out for us. Bingo, right there, okay, perfect. Now, well, let's say ground later, none. Let's say, ready to harvest, are ready to harvest? Let's do that, see what that looks like here. All right, beautiful, that looks kind of nice, looks like a field again. All right, now we go in here, we can add weeds, so I can hit one there, it's not doing them for me of course why aren't they showing up it's because of the ground state here that's set field fruit type let's just go barley uh we will do harvested that'll just make it a little bit easier all right bingo so now the weeds should start showing up for us add weeds of course now it's not working anymore let me go over to this field it's working just fine over here oh it is adding them there's some weeds getting added in here i think it's just having some issues loading we're gonna try this field here i didn't have any issues well this one i'm having issues with but anyhow you can adjust your weeds up and down, and you can adjust your field stone up and down. Uh, oh, look, field stone works, so I've got some field stone in there, or you can, you know, do whatever you want to do. I think I'm overloading it because it's not really used to this. Advanced growth, if I click that, it's going to just push everything forward to growth state. I can set us to a specific month and have it set to that growth state there. Uh, set farmland owner, I can choose the farmland and own it. Um, my farm, NBC, and then all the farmland or which one I want to do. I can reset the field overlay in the menu and do all that sort of stuff here. Finally, the environment menu. I can set the month, the day of the month, if you had it set to more than one day months. I can set the specific time. I can set the weather. Is it sunny, cloudy, raining, anything like that? I can set it to variation one, two, three, four, or whatever variation of it. So a couple of different variations, all those. I can show info if I want to know that. So it'll have me all the info, all the info for the different variations in there. I can remove all the tire tracks on there if I'd like to. It's got some debug options. I can add snow to the map, which is kind of fun. No, didn't work. Loading probably is my guess here. But anyhow, so it does take a little bit to update when you add stuff and stuff like that. So I should load some snow. Yeah, you can see in the distance they're loading there. Here it's coming for us. But anyhow, so a lot of cool different stuff in here. You can remove snow from the map as well. I can add salt within, I don't know, about 10 meters of me. Well, let's do that. See, it should, oh, didn't get rid of it. We can go down here now that we actually added it. Nope, not doing anything. There we go. <laughs> he got snow. As you can see, guys, I know I probably missed a bunch of stuff with this, but as you can see, this is a very complex mod uh, that has a lot of customization for you. So hopefully this helped you out and get you kind of a little bit started into it. I know there was a lot there as far as what was going on, so hopefully this helped you out. But anyhow, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. 
This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.